Today we are going to talk about injecting dependency in MVC Model View Controller, WCF, Windows Communication Foundation, and Web Forms. Depend on abstractions. Do not depend on concrete classes. When we build an application architect in such a way that it depends upon abstractions instead of depending on the concrete classes, then such a system is loosely coupled. It's very easy to test such a system. It's expandable and it's maintainable. Let's look at an architecture that depends upon the concrete class and hence it's tightly coupled. Building a tightly coupled application makes it very difficult to test. An application should be built in such a way that each layer can be tested all by itself even if subsequent layers are not available. In this example, let's suppose a user interface class represents a user interface layer. A text calculator class represents a business logic component and salary represents a data access class. And I've also created another class which will be shared among different classes. It's called a utility class. In this architecture, the user interface layer is directly dependent upon the business logic component layer. And business logic component layer is directly dependent on the data access layer. And all the three layers are directly dependent on the utility, which is the logger class. All these layers have a very tight coupling. The user interface layer, the method calculate employee text, creates a concrete instance of a text calculator. And then it calls a method called calculate employee text. Calculate employee text in text calculator creates an instance of a salary class and then calls a method calculate employee text. The salary represents a class in the data access layer. It goes into the database and retrieves salaries information based on the ID passed to it. Creating an application in such a way creates a tight coupling. As you could see, there is no abstraction whatsoever. All instances are of concrete classes. Now we will try to change the tightly coupled architecture that we discussed in a previous section to a loosely coupled architecture. Let's start with the logger class. The logger class in the previous example was a static class and it had a static method. In this example, we changed the logger class to be an instance class. We define an interface called iLog and there is only one method called log which takes in a string as an input parameter. The logger class now implements the interface called iLog. We also created an interface called iSalary which defines one method called calculate employee text and take employee ID as an input parameter of type integer. The salary class implements the interface called iSalary. Since salary class has a dependency on log class, so we created a constructor which takes in logger as a dependency. The constructor takes in a logger and initializes the internal variable of type iLog. When calculate employee text is called on the salary class, it uses this dependency to log the information. Salary class basically just goes to the database and retrieves the information from the database. Since this is an example, so I'm just returning it directly a hard-coded value. I have also defined an interface called iText Calculator. iText Calculator has one method called Calculate Employee Text, which takes in employee ID as an input parameter of type integer. Text Calculator implements the interface called iText Calculator. Since Text Calculator previously had two dependencies, that is salary and log. So both the dependencies are now being passed to the text calculator through its constructor. Once constructor initializes the dependency, then calculate employee text uses this dependency. In a previous example, user interface layer had a hard dependency on the business logic component as well as the logging component. Both these dependencies are now being passed through the constructor of user interface layer. Constructor initializes this dependencies. Calculate employee text method in user interface layer uses this dependencies to get the employee text and to log the information. As you could see in this implementation, there is no concrete class. The whole application has been built using abstraction, that is interface. The framework will automatically inject the dependencies when the user interface components is created. Let's look how the framework inject the dependencies. Injecting dependency in MVC, that is model view controller. Let's see an example of dependency injection in MVC application. Click on file, new, project. 
select web and then select mvc3 application and then click ok once you have created a mvc3 application then right click on the project and use manage nuget packages In my case, I have already installed this, so I will skip this step. Once you have installed the application in a reference folder, you can verify that it has been installed. Beside adding reference to the DLL unity.mvc3, it also adds bootstrapper class and a readme file. In a readme file, it instructs you to call a method initialize on a bootstrapper in the application start event in global asax.cs file. In application underscore start event, I have added bootstrapper.initialize method. This method internally calls a private static method called build unity container. Build Unity container registers all your dependencies. In our example, there were three dependencies, iLog, iSalary, and iCalculator. I have mapped iLog to Logger, iSalary to Salary, and iTextCalculator to TextCalculator. Build Unity container returns an instance of a concrete class for iUnity container. Container initialize method then registers this container with the dependency resolver static method. Once you have registered the dependency, then you can start using the container. You don't have to use the container directly. The NuGet package that you have just installed, it automatically intercepts the creation of the controller and it injects the dependency in for you. Let's look at an example of home controller. In home controller, I have created a constructor which takes in two dependencies. One is iText calculator and the other one is iLog. The constructor uses these values to initialize its internal private variable. In the index method, I'm using the text calculator dependency called calculate employee text and pass employee ID is equal to one. It returns the text for that employee and then I'm just concatenating with already existing message that it was doing with the text value. Whenever MVC tries to create an instance of a controller and it sees that there is a constructor which takes the dependency. It uses the container to resolve the dependency. Let's run this application. From the data access layer, since we were returning 5000, so the employee text was calculated equal to 5000. Injecting dependency in WCF, that is Windows Communication Foundation. Let's look at an example of injecting dependency in WCF. File, new projects WCF WCF services service applications and then click OK right click on the project and select manage new get project search for unity.wcf and install this package. Since this package is already installed on my system, so I will skip this step. Go into references and verify that unity.wcf has been installed. When this package is installed, it adds a DLL to your reference and it also adds two additional files. One is the readme file and the other one is the WCF service factory. WCF service factory is executed when the service is invoked for the first time. This is where you do all your registration. In our case, we have three dependencies that is iLog, iSalary, and iText calculator. So I have mapped iLog to logger, iSalary to salary, iText calculator to text calculator. I have created a constructor for the service that I wanted to use. In our case, a service is service1, so I've created a constructor called service1. Since our application depends upon two dependencies, so I have passed two dependencies to this construct. Constructor initializes the private variable by using these two dependencies. When the client calls the method getData, I use the dependency underscore text calculator and call a method on it called calculate employee text, and I pass the value that the client has passed to me. In our case, we'll just be passing one. The value returned by calculate employee tax is returned to the client by this method. When WCF tries to create an instance of a class service one, it realizes that there is a constructor 
which requires two dependencies. It uses the container to resolve these dependencies while creating an instance. If you recall in MVC, we did not register any co controller, but WCF requires you to register the services to its interfaces. Let's run this application and see. Right click on the services and set it as a start page. Run the application. Let's run the method getData. For ID, we'll pass a value of 1 and invoke the method called getData. The return value that we were expecting is 5000, injecting dependency in web form. Let's look at an example of injecting dependency in web application form. Let's start with a new project, a file, new, project, form application, and then click OK. We'll install a NuGet package to inject dependency. Since I have already installed unity.webforms, so I will skip this step. Once you have successfully installed the NuGet package, go into references to where if the appropriate DLL has been installed. Just like in MVC and WCF, NuGet package installed additional classes, but in web form, it does not install additional. You will have to create additional classes all by yourself. Let's go through that process of creating additional classes. To be consistent with MVC, I have manually created a class called bootstrapper. This is a static class, which has a private variable of type iUnityContainer. It has two static methods, initialize and teardown. Initialize method initializes the service locator the registry information. The service locator once initialized will be available for use in the application. Since our application has three dependencies, that is iLog, iSalary, and iText calculator, I have registered all three of them over here. iLog is mapped to logger, iSalary is mapped to salary, and iText calculator is mapped to text calculator. It's worth noting that the concrete class is referenced only at one place in the application and that is in the initialize method. Bootstrapper initialize method will be called from global ASPX page in application startup event. In application startup event, I'm calling an initialize method on bootstrapper static class. In default page, I have defined three private variables of type iLog, iSalary, and iText calculator. When a default page is loaded, I use service locator to get the instance of iLog, iSalary, and iText calculator. Then I call a method calculate employee text on text calculator concrete class. I have modified the ASPH page slightly to add a label so that I can display the information. Once calculate employee text returns me the text, I display this information in the label. The concrete class is only referenced in the whole application at only one place, that is global.aspx page. In all other applications, it's using abstraction to get the concrete class. Let's run this application and see the result. The expected result was 5000. Injecting dependency in Windows form and console application. In Windows form and console application, dependencies can be registered in the main method. Summary. Depend on abstraction. Do not depend on concrete classes. By coupling application layers, that is user interface layer, business logic layer, and data access layer, it becomes possible to test each layer separately. Please see my presentation on a strategy design pattern and dependency injection to learn how decoupling helps in writing test cases. By injecting dependencies, third-party component can be decoupled from your main application. Please see my presentation on adopter design pattern to learn how dependency injection can help in decoupling third-party components from your main application. Thank you so much for attending this course.